so much the, the powerful tool that it was in the past, but it's been one of their most powerful tools in the world for carrying out what the, uh, uh, their agenda. Okay. Um, so let's see. Let's pick up where I was. Back um, in World War II? Back to World War II. The reason why I had to bring in the Freemasons is, is Stalin and Churchill and Roosevelt, mm -hmm. who were the Allied leaders, they were all three Freemasons. And um, Ch uh, Churchill was of the Illuminati bloodlines, and so was Roosevelt. Stalin married into one of these prominent um, Kagangovich, if I'm pronouncing the Russian name uh, right. Um, he married into a prominent um, Illuminati bloodline. Mm -hmm. And in fact, uh, you see in Russian politics that same the uh, same uh, family that Stalin was married to is still very powerful in Russian politics. But anyway, so you had three people that are con uh, that are controlling these com uh, countries, or at least the, are the visible the political leaders of these countries that are all on the same team. And uh, th uh, Germany and Japan and, and several other smaller countries that join them are arrayed against Russia and the United Kingdom. And the British wanted the Americans to enter the war. Roosevelt wanted us to enter the war. So... But wasn't Roosevelt's one of his campaign promises at that time not yeah. to enter the European war? Right, right. Just the same as Wilson. Um, before World War I, his mm -hmm. campaign was uh, he would keep us out of the war. And then very shortly after he became president, he declared war on Germany. And it was such a trauma to my grandfather because he had voted for Wilson uh -huh. that he never voted Democrat again in his <laughs> life. He it, it it had such a strong reaction. He had a knee-jerk reaction. He always voted Republican after that. But yeah, that was a campaign promise. But see, these people uh, they say whatever it takes to to um, to be popular, mm -hmm. and then they do whatever they want um, because we don't mean anything to them. And, and so, in going back and researching, I came across a book uh, that was written which described uh, aircraft carrier warfare in the Pacific in a war between Japan and the United States before there was ever an aircraft carrier built. And this book describes basically World War II. So this is ra rather amazing uh -huh. that someone was already thinking this, this stuff out. And then you'll s see that the, when one studies it out, that the American military brought the Japanese Navy over to Pearl Harbor and specifically showed them item by item how the Pearl Harbor could be attacked and then on the basis of that um, basis of those those tours mm -hmm. the Japanese went back uh, made up their battle plans American intelligence and British intelligence knew of the battle plans they, they watched uh, the Japanese fleet practice their practice for their attack on Pearl Harbor and then Roosevelt to make sure that uh, there was a lot of losses um, in, in the day before they attacked he had all of our planes uh, put on the airfields in circles with their noses pointed towards the center of the circle so that it'd be har very hard for them to take off when the Japanese attacked. Um, there was a lot of things like this that were done to make sure that there was a lot of Americans that died so mm -hmm. that they could get United States into the war. Um, uh, you know, I, I could talk for hours about how they created the, this war and then how they kept it going. Uh -huh. The Illuminati, <laughs> well shortly after Pearl Harbor, uh, President Roosevelt and I, and I showed the documentation um, in, in my talk here in Austin uh, from the federal code. He drew up an executive decree which allowed the Secretary of the Treasury, uh, Morgenthau, to exempt whoever he wanted so that they could trade with the enemy. 
So these Illuminati families like the Rockefellers who controlled Standard Oil and Onassis were given the freedom to trade with the Germans so that they could keep the Germans supplied with essential um, uh, essentials like uh, diamonds for uh, uh, um, for there's a, a lot of industrial uses for diamonds, including they were needed for the gyroscopes and the gyroscopes for the V2 rockets and everything. They they supplied Germany with oil, um, designs for military equipment, and a lot of other things that had the Illuminati not been given the, that special privilege of continuing to trade with Germany during the war, the war would have come to an end easily by 1942. So basically we had an embargo on Germany if we wanted to, but we just never closed the embargo. Or we just never kept the supplies from coming into the country. Well, if you were one of these Illuminati bloodlines, uh, uh, one of these uh, powerful men, kingpins is the word I use within these Illuminati bloodlines, you had the privileged status of being above the war. Above the war. The and, rest of and, us, it was a real war. And actually, Fritz, I think I can remember from your book, uh, as from the Onassis chapter, uh, his fleet of ships almost went unscathed, is that correct? Totally unscathed. They were never attacked. How many ships did he have? Um, it was... <laughs> It was between two and three hundred ships, merchant ships. And he was a, he's from the Greek fleet, correct? Yeah, Greek his, merchant ship. his uh, ships flew the Greek flag. Uh, essentially, every other Greek ship that was floating when the war started was sunk. But his ships went in all of the theaters of the war, the Mediterranean, the North Sea, and uh, they were never attacked by either side. It took collaboration at the highest levels for him to <laughs> travel around in, in a world war without anybody bothering him while he made millions, perhaps billions of dollars off of the whole thing. This is incredibly fascinating. I tell you what, Fritz, we're almost running out of time here, but uh, before we do, I would like you to briefly touch on, I know you mentioned it earlier, how the Bush family has been coming into prominence here of late. Uh, could you give us maybe a little bit more of a background behind that family? Um, some of our uh, listeners out there may be familiar with the order.